This is video number one on electrostatic potential and capacitance. Timestamps are given in the description box. You can watch parts of video if you are running short of time. In this video, I will talk about electrostatic potential, how it is defined. I will find potential due to a point charge and due to a dipole. I will find electric field due to a dipole at an arbitrary point using the expression for potential. I will find potential due to a system of charges and also due to a spherical shell of charge. I will solve seven conceptual questions and one question from GE main PYQ. Finally, I will summarize this video. When work is done on a body against a force in moving from point A to point B, its potential energy increases. And if this work done is independent of path between the points A and B, then the force is said to be a conservative force. For example, if you take this earth surface and I am moving a mass say from point A here to another point B which is at a higher height, I can move this mass from point A to point B along this straight path like this or I can move it horizontally first and then vertically up along this path or I can move from A to B along a arbitrary path. The interesting thing is the work done in moving this mass M from point A to point B along this first path or second path or third path is seen. This is property of a conservative force. Here gravity force which is acting downwards is a conservative force. Example of conservative force are gravity and spring force. For example, if I take a spring which is initially like this and I stretch it, I can stretch this spring from this initial state to the final state gradually or I can initially compress the spring and then stretch it to the required length or I can overstretch the spring initially and then comp compress it to the required length. So the work done in moving from the initial state to the final state is same in all these three cases. So the spring force is also a conservative force. Coulomb force which is due to a charge is also a conservative force. Here, capital Q is a point charge which is located at the origin. Here, have another charge, small q, which is also positively charged, and this is called a test charge. And we are moving this test charge from point R to point P. Since these two charges are like charges, there will be a repulsive force between them. So, to move this test charge Q from R to P, it has to overcome this repulsive force. So, the work has to be done on this charge Q. Charge Q is at the origin. So external force is required to move this charge small q from R to P because we are getting closer to the charge plus q. So this work done is F dot ds. So this external work done should be just enough to overcome the Coulomb repulsion. The Coulomb repulsion is Fe and the direction of this external force will be opposite to this Coulomb repulsion force. So it's minus Fe. So this work done goes in increasing the potential energy of the system. Here the system is system of capital Q and small q charges. So it's the final potential energy where the test charge Q is at the location P and the initial potential energy of the system where the test charge is at location R. The electrostatic potential. So this work done in moving this test charge from R to P is dependent on this amount of charge Q. If this Q charge is doubled, so the value of it is doubled, then the amount of work required to move from R to P will be doubling. So electrostatic potential difference between two points is defined as the work done in moving unit positive charge. So what is the work done in moving the charge Q from initial point to final point, if we divide that by the amount of charge, we will get the potential difference between those two points. Electrostatic potential at point B 
is different as a work done in moving a unit positive charge from infinity to that point. Infinity is a place where it's far away from all the source charges. So the electric field at infinity is zero. It's convenient to choose the potential at infinity as zero. So the work done in moving a point charge from infinity, unit positive charge from infinity to that point is taken as a potential at that point. Now let's find potential to be a point charge. Capital Q is a point charge, it's so located at the origin, and we have to find a potential in an arbitrary point, say P, at a distance R. So by definition, it is the work done in moving a unit positive charge from infinity to this point P. So to do, to do that, let's consider an intermediate point P prime, which is a distance R prime, and let us move this charge, unit positive charge, from P prime by a small distance delta R prime. Work done moving a unit positive charge at P prime by a small distance delta R prime is given as F dot ds, where the force is the Coulomb repulsion force, which is k into q into one over the distance square, which is R prime square, with the distance that is delta R. And k is one by four pi epsilon naught. So this is the amount of work done in moving a distance delta R at the location R prime. So the work done moving in positive charge from infinity to the point P is integral of this one. So this is work done moving by a distance delta R, similar to work done moving a distance dr, which is infinitely small, is kq by r prime square into dr. So if you integrate this work done from r prime varying from infinity to that corresponding to the point P, which is r, we will get this value, kq by r. So this is the work done in moving a unit positive charge from infinity to the point P. And this is the potential at point P. The potential at point P due to point charge, point charge Q is kq by r and k is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. To find potential due to your dipole, let's find potential at this point P, which is a distance r, and this distance is much larger compared to the size of the dipole. So this is a dipole of charges minus q and plus q separated by a small distance 2a. The potential at this point P can be found. By finding the potential due to this plus q and minus q and adding them up. So, this adding potential to the individual charges to get the total charge is allowed by superposition principle. And potential is a scalar quantity, so this sum is a scalar sum. Potential due to the positive charge plus q at the location point p is 1 by 4 pi of the charge q divided by the distance. The distance of this point p from the positive charge is r1. And potential due to minus q is minus q divided by the distance that is r2. And R1 we can relate to R and E using the cosine rule in this triangle. So R1 square is R square plus A square minus 2AR cos theta. Similarly, R2 square, this angle is pi minus theta. So R2 square is R square plus A square minus 2AR cos pi minus theta. And cos pi minus theta is minus cos theta. So this will become plus 2AR cos theta. So we can rewrite R1 square as taking R square outside as this one and we are considering points which are much farther away compared to the size of the dipole that is R is much much larger compared to E. So under this approximation, this whole dipole approximation, this second term can be neglected, this term can be neglected compared to this term. So this is approximately R square into 1 minus 2A cos theta by R. Similarly, R2 square can be written like this taking R1 square commonly outside from here as this one and on this approximation e square by r square term can be neglect compared to e by r term so this is approximately r square into 1 plus 2a cos theta by r to get 1 by r1 we can get 1 by r1 square from here and taking the square root of that so we get 1 by r into 1 minus 2a cos theta by r raised to the power minus half and E by R is much less than 1. So, this is expansion we have 1 plus nx and so x square terms like that. So, this is the first term. The second term will be a square by r square. Third term will be a cube by r cube. Under the dipole approximation, E by R is much less than 1. So, we can neglect higher order terms. So, only keeping the first term, we get this one. 
Similarly, 1 by R2 is 1 by R and 1 plus this one raised to minus R. So here also we just keep the first term, second term A square by R square and third term A cube by R cube. So one can be neglected because B is much, much smaller compared to R. So now the potential, we know 1 by R1 and 1 by R2. So it's cubic of epsilon naught. And we have to subtract these two. So this first term will cancel. So we'll get 2a cos theta by r square. And we can combine q and 2a as the dipole moment of the dipole, which is a charge in the separation between them. So potential can be written like this. And p cos theta can be written as p dot r cap. r cap is a unit vector along this direction. The dipole is centered at the origin. And uh, p cap is from in this direction from minus q to plus q. And the angle between p and r cap vector is cos theta. So p cos theta can be written as p dot r cap. So potential of a dipole at a distance r is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught p dot r cap by r square. And this is under the dipole approximation where r is much much greater than u. So dipole is kept at the origin, the center of the dipole coincides with the origin. Let's consider the question, find potential at any point in the perpendicular bisector plane of a dipole. We can pause and attempt this question. So this is a dipole of charges minus q and plus q separated by distance 2a. And perpendicular bisector plane is in the middle of these two charges and it's perpendicular to the line joining these two charges. So any point on this bisector plane is equidistant from the charge plus q and minus q. So potential at a point P is potential due to plus q and minus q. And we can add them up because superposition principle is valid. Potential due to plus q is k into q by r, where r is the distance of plus q from P. And due to minus q is k into minus q by the distance, which is the same distance r. So these two will cancel and give the potential as zero. So this is true for any point in the perpendicular bisector plane and this bisector plane is a 3D plane. So any point on this plane is equidistant from plus k and minus q. We have to do visualization in 3D. So all the points in this perpendicular bisector plane will have to potentialize zero. To find the electric field due to a dipole at a general point, say P, which is a distance r from the center of the dipole, we have the expression for potential as 1 by 4 plus 1 p cos theta by r square, which you derived previously here. And electric field is related to the potential as its gradient, the negative gradient. And here the potential V is function of both r and theta. So the gradient we have, gradient with respect to r and also gradient with respect to theta. So if we take the gradient with respect to r, we get the radial component of the electric field and gradient with respect to theta will give the tangential component of the electric field. So taking the partial derivative of v with respect to r, so since partial derivative theta is constant, so p cos will come outside, so it becomes derivative of 1 by r square, which is minus 1 by r cube. So that minus will cancel with this minus and we get the expression for radial electric field as 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught 2 p cos theta by r cube. Similarly, the tangential component taking derivative with respect to theta partial derivative. So r is constant, so p by r square will come out, and derivative of cos theta is minus sine theta. So it will give the tangential component as 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught p sine theta by r cube. So the electric field goes as 1 by 4 pi epsilon the charge by distance square. And here for the dipole, the charge by distance square takes the form charge into distance by distance q. And p, p has the dimensions of charge into distance. And radial component will have cos theta component and tangential component will have sin theta component. And radial component electric field is more by a factor of 2. That is the way to remember this formula. So throttle electric field is got by combining these two components, the radial component and the tangential component. Let's consider this question. 
the electric potential in the region is given by the relation minus v equal to 4 plus 5 square if a dipole is placed at position minus 1 comma 0 with the dipole moment p pointing along positive y direction then option a net force on the dipole is 0 b net torque is 0 option c net torque on the dipole is not 0 and it is clockwise direction <coughs> option d net torque on the dipole is not 0 and it is anti clockwise direction you can pause and attempt this question <coughs> This is the origin 0, 0, and the dipole is placed at minus 1, 0, and the dipole is oriented along the y direction, positive y direction. P vector is from minus p to plus p, and the direction of p vector is same as positive y. This they have given in the question. And potential expression has been given like this the electric field is negative gradient of the potential. So, electric field is 10x i cap. Plus q and minus q are the same value of x. So, electric field at plus q and minus q locations are same. So, the force is q into e on the positive charge, it will be around the direction of electric field. On the negative charge, it will be on opposite direction of electric field. But the magnitudes are same because electric field is same as they are in the same x location. So, the net force acting on the dipole as a whole is zero because these two forces are cancelled. But this force acting on plus q will produce a torque in the clockwise direction. These two charges are of same mass, so it will rotate around the center point. And this force on this minus q will produce a clockwise star. So both the torques are in the same direction, they add up and give a total torque in the clockwise direction. So the cut option is option A, which is net force is 0, and option C, net torque not 0 and it's clockwise. Correct options are option A and C. This is the next question. This is from J.E. Main 2019. Two electric dipoles A and B with respective dipole moments DA minus 4Q A i cap and minus 2Q A i cap are placed on the x axis with separation R as shown in the figure. The distance from A at which both of them produce the same potential is. You have to know the expression for potential due to a dipole which you have derived just now. So using that, we can solve this problem. We can pause and attempt this question. The expression for potential duty dipole is 1 by 4 plus on p dot r cap by r square. This we are derived. So you have to use that thing here. So let us check whether the potential can be equal at some point between A and B. For example, let's say this is the point where you are finding the potential. So, potential at this point due to this dipole at A is K, which is 1 by 4 psi naught, and then P dot R cap. P vector is along minus I cap, and for this dipole A, R cap vector is towards right because it's away from the center of the dipole, and for dipole at B, the R cap vector is towards left because the dipole is centered at the origin and r cap vector direction is from the center to the point where you are finding the potential so p dot r cap for dipole a will be minus i cap dot i cap so it will be negative and for b r cap is along minus i cap and dipole is also along minus i cap so it will be positive and the magnitudes are 4 QA by x square, the distance square, the distance of this point P from this dipole. This distance is x, and from B, this distance will be r minus x, and the magnitude will be 4 Q by A by x square and 2 QA by r minus x square. But one of them is negative, the other one is positive, so it's not possible for both of them to be equal. So any point between A and B is not possible for the potential to be equal. Now, next consider some point right of B. So, let's consider a point 
here and check whether the potential due to these two dipoles are same here. So to find potential due to dipole A, so the R cap vector will be towards right and here also the R cap vector will be towards right. So R cap vector for both the dipoles is along I cap and uh, the dipole moves around minus I cap. So here it's possible for them to be equal. And the magnitudes are 4 QA by X square. The distance of this point from the dipole A is X, this distance is X. So the distance between the dipole B and this point we are finding the potential is X minus R. So potential due to dipole A is minus k, where k is 1 by 4 plus 1, 4 qa by x square, and due to dipole b is minus k, 2 qa by the distance square, which is x minus r square. This distance is x, so this distance is x minus r. So we have to check whether it's possible or not. So cancelling the common factors, minus k, and then qa, and a factor of 2, and taking the square root, we get plus or minus root 2 by x, equal to 1 by r minus x. So simplifying, we get taking the positive sign root 2 by root 2 plus 1 into r or root 2 by root 2 minus 1 into r as the values of x and x is distance from a so x is greater than r so this thing is fraction of r so this this is not possible and this thing is greater than r so this is one possible location at which the potential can be equal now let's consider a point left of a and check whether it's possible for the potential to be equal at a point left of it. So let's consider some point here. So this point is at a distance x from dipole A and from B it is at a distance r plus x and uh, r cap for this dipole A will be towards left that is minus i cap R cap for this dipole B will also be towards left, that's also around minus I cap. So it is possible for it to be equal if the magnitudes can be same. So potential due to dipole is k into 4 qa by x square, and due to dipole B is 4 into 2 qa by distance square. This distance is r plus x. So let's check whether this, can, this thing can be equal. So cancelling out the common factors, we have to check whether this is possible. So simplifying we get r by x equal to minus 1 plus or minus 1 by root 2. And 1 by root 2 is root is 1.414. So this is less than 1. So this whole thing is negative. And r and x are distances, both are positive. So it's not possible for this to be satisfied. So left of a is also it's not possible for the potential to be equal. So the only Location where the potential can be equal is right of B under the distance root 2 by root 2 minus 1 into R. So, correct option is option 3. Let's consider the system of point charges. Here there are 5 point charges Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, and Q5 at distances as shown here. So, to find potential is general point P. So this potential can be found by using superposition principle. Potential at point P due to all these charges is potential at point P due to the individual charges and summing them up. So potential at point P due to charge 1 is 1 by 4 plus 1 Q1 divided by R1P and due to the charge 2 is Q2 divided by R2P and so on. This can be generalized for n point charges. This is the next question. The arrangement shown here consists of three elements. One, a thin rod of charge minus three coulomb, micro coulomb that forms a full circle of radius six centimeter. Two, a second thin rod of charge two micro coulomb that forms a circular arc of radius four centimeter and concentric with the full circle, subtending an angle of 90 degrees at the center of the full circle. Three electric dipole with dipole moment perpendicular to the radial line and has magnitude 1.2 into 10 to minus 21 coulomb meter. 
find the net electric potential in volts at the center. So to find potential at this point, so potential at this point can be found using superposition principle. It is sum of potentials due to this dipole, this arc, and this circular ring. You can pause and attempt this question. Potential due to dipole at this point is zero because one of them is positive charge, other one is negative charge, and they are equidistant from this point because uh, this point is located the bisector plane of this one. The radial line joining this point and the center of the dipole is perpendicular, which which they have given in the question. So potential due to this dipole, this point is zero, and potential to this uh, ring of charge one. All the elements of this ring of charge the same distance and potential is a scalar quantity. So we can assume that the full charge of the ring is considered at single point and potential to that point charge is k into the charge which is minus 3 microcoulomb divided by the distance that is the radius of the ring. And k is 1 by 4 pips over 1. And also this circular arc, all the elements of this arc are the same distance. So all this thing will add up. So we, we can assume that the full charge of this arc is considered at a point and find potential due to the point charge which is k into the charge to microcoulomb divided by the distance that is 4 centimeters which is 4 into 10 to minus 2 meters. So this potential is minus half into some factor and this is plus half into the same factor. So v1 and v2 will cancel each other and v3 is 0. So the net potential at the center is 0. Let's find potential to be a spherical shell of charge. This is a spherical shell which has got uniform surface charge density sigma and let the radius of the shell be capital R and we have to find potential at an arbitrary point P. Say the distance of that point is small r from this center. So the electric field due to a spherical shell of charge outside of the shell it's as if the full charge of the shell is located at the center as a point charge and for points inside of the shell the electric field is zero. This is a standard result for shell of charge which has got uniform surface charge density. So this result we will use here. So potential any point P is worked on moving the point charge from infinity to that point. So the same as potential due to your point charge at this which is located at the center at this point. So for point outside of the shell, the potential is given as 1 by 4 epsilon r q by r, where q is the total charge of the shell. And potential at any point inside, it is same as the value of the potential at this location of the shell, because whatever is the work done, moving the charge from here to here, after reaching this point, no further work is required to move the charge inside, because inside the electric field is zero. So whatever is the value of the potential at this shell surface, the same value which will continue inside. And value of the potential of this shell location is 1 by 4 plus naught the charge q divided by the distance which is capital R. So the surface of the shell, the value of the potential is 1 by 4 plus naught q by R. And inside the same value will continue because there is no electric field inside. So no, work, no further work is required to move the charge inside. So outside the potential will vary like this. So to bring the charge inside we have to keep doing more and more work and this work goes as 1 by r and after reaching the surface of the shell no further work is required to move it inside because inside there is no electric field. Let's consider this question. Two point charges q1 minus cq where c is positive are separated by distance e. Find where the potential is zero along the line joining the charges. You can pause and attempt this question. So the two charges q and minus cq are located like this separated by distance a. So let the point p where the potential is 0 be at a distance d from q. q and minus cq are unlike charges because uh, c is a positive constant. Potential at point p is k into q by d that is the distance plus k into minus cq by the distance of this minus cq from this one is 
a minus d. This full distance is a, and this is d. So this distance is a minus d. So whether this can be equal, and if it is equal, what is the value of d? So putting this equal to zero, we get d as a divided by c plus one. Denominator is greater than one, so d is a fraction of a. So d is in between. Point P is in between the two charges. Let's consider this next question. Two rings of charge Q and minus Q and radius R are separated by a distance R. Find the voltage moving a point charge Q from center of minus Q ring to plus Q ring. Voltage moving a charge Q from one point to another point is Q to the potential difference between the two points. So if you can find the potential difference between the initial point and the final point, we can get the work done and move the charge from initial point to the final point. You can pause and answer this question. So these are the two rings of charges Q and minus Q of radius R, and they are separated by a distance R. And we have to move this charge Q from point B to point A. So potential at point A is potential to this ring and also this second ring. So this ring, all the elements of this ring are the same distance R. So we can assume the full charge of the ring is constant at the point and potential due to that charges K into Q by R. And all elements of this ring also are the same distance root to R. This distance between the two rings is R and the radius of this ring is R. So this distance which is distance of an element from of this ring from this point A is root 2R. So this is a right angle triangle. And all the elements of this ring are the same distance. So we can assume that the full ring, the charge of it is constant at a point. So potential of this ring is minus KQ divided by root 2R. Similar potential at point B due to this ring is K into minus Q by R. And due to this ring, all the elements of this ring are the same distance root 2 r. So k into q divided by the distance root 2 r. So to find the potential difference ring, a and b, we have to subtract these two. And the work done is q into the potential difference. So work done is final potential minus the initial potential. So work done will be, will go in increasing the potential energy. So if work is done on the system, then the final potential will be more. So we take the final portion G, which is the location A, B A minus B B. So we subtract B A minus B B. So that will give K Q into Q by R into 2 minus root 2. So this is the work done in moving the charge from the center of minus Q ring to plus Q ring. This is the next question. Find the potential along the axis of a ring of charge Q. So this is a ring of charge Q and radius R and you have to find potential P along the axis as it will be difficult and this axis is perpendicular to this plane of this ring. So let this point be at a distance x from the center of the ring. So if you take an element of this ring, that element will be at a distance R square plus X square square root. This hypotenuse is the right angle triangle made of R and X as the legs. So potential of this due to this element is k into dq by r square plus x square square root. And all the elements of this ring are at the same distance. So to get the total potential, we have to integrate this one. So it will become integral dq. k divided by square root of r plus x square is constant for all the elements of the ring. So the total potential is k into q divided by square root of r square plus x square. So k into q by distance and the distance is the hypotenuse distance. This is the next question. Two concentric shells carrying charges Q and Q. Radii are smaller and capital R. The potential difference between the two is. And does this potential difference depend on the outer shell charge Q? You can force and this question. So these are the two shells of radius R and R and with charges Q and Q. So we find potential difference between these two shells. Let us consider a point A which is just outside of the inner shell and point B which is just outside of the outer shell. 
So define conditions point A and point B. So we can use the standard result that for points outside of a shell, it's as if the four charges shell is concentrated at the point charge at the center, and for points inside of the shell, the value of the potential is same as the value of the potential at the surface of the shell. This result we have obtained earlier. So potential at point A is outside of this inner shell that is K into Q by R. So it's as if this full shell charge is located in the center as a point charge. And point A is inside of this outer shell. So what is the potential at the value of the shell surface? The same value will continue inside. So potential at the outer shell surface is K into Q by capital R. And potential at point B is outside of both the shells. So it's as if both the shells, the charges are considered as a point charge at the center. So the distance of point B from the center is capital R. So the potential will be K into Q by R plus K into capital Q by R. So the potential difference is V A minus V B. So this term will cancel. So only this term will remain. So it's K into Q, the 1 by R minus 1 by capital R. So this potential difference is not dependent on the outer shell charge capital Q. Another way to understand this result is the electric field in this region, it's only due to this inner shell charge Q. This outer shell charge Q will pro produce electric field only the outer region, instead it will be zero. And this inner shell charge mind Q small Q will produce electric field here and also outside, instead it will be zero. So the electric field in the in-between region is only due to this charge small q. So the potential difference depends only on the small charge q. So another way of getting this result is to get the electric field expression in between the two shells. So that we can get by using the standard result. The electric field inside the charge shell is zero. So the electric field contribution of this outer shell is zero. The electric field contribution of this inner shell is as if it's a point charge located at the center. So electric field at any point here is 1 by 4 percent over q divided by this distance square. And if you assume this distance of an arbitrary point here from the center is x, then the electric field is q divided by 4 percent over x square. This electric field is given only this charge small q. Another way of getting this thing is use the Gauss's law and the Gaussian surface as a spherical surface of radius x. So the first seven of the surface is e to 4 pi x square, that is q enclosed by epsilon naught. And Q enclosed with a small Q charge. So from this, you get the same expression for electric field. And potential difference is integral E dot dr from small r capital R. So we'll get this expression, which is same as this one. To summarize, the potential duty of point charge is K into Q by R, where R is the distance of the point at which you are calculating the potential. From the location of the charge and k is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. Potential due to dipole at a general point is 1 by 4 epsilon naught p cos theta by r square. The dipole is center of the dipole is at the origin and p is at a point at a distance r from the center of the dipole. <coughs> so this p cos theta can be written as p dot r cap also. <coughs> Electric field at a general point due to a dipole will have radial component and theta component because the potential is dependent both on radial distance and also theta. And it's 1 by 4 percent on distance by distance square, charge by distance square, and charge by distance square takes the form charge into distance by distance q. And charge and distance comes from this p, and radial component will have cos theta and a factor of 2. And tangential component is 1 by 4 percent on p by r cube. And then sine theta. What is due to the system of in point charges is what is due to the individual charges we have to have, add them up. This is by superposition principle. And what is due to the spherical shell of charge is as if the for points outside is as if the whole charge is considered as a point charge inside. And for points inside, since the electric field inside of the shell is zero, whatever is the value of the potential at the surface of the shell, the same value will continue inside. I also take doubt solving sessions for physics and maths subject of GE need. So if you're interested, you can contact me.
this is my WhatsApp number. Free is nominal and first class is free. Description box has got links and timestamps. You can watch WhatsApp video that you find interesting.